Good afternoon, welcome to We Repair. Um, so today I'm working on a little bit of a project piece for someone. Um, so I was sort of off with this laptop. Um, obviously it's <laughs> looking in, uh, it's been in better condition, to say the least. Um, so I was offered this as a bit of a, um, something to repair as, uh, to basically to, to give to one of the kids. Um, it's seen better days, it's got a pretty smashed screen, obviously the lid's pretty disgusting, a hard drive's missing, and um, I think it was running Vista Premium, which tells you how old it is. Uh, so this is a Dell Inspiron 1525. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bigger piece of work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this all taken apart, I'm going to replace the screen, I'm going to replace the lid, um, I've got a new lid for this. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there because it's uh, it needs a bit of a complete overhaul. So uh, I'll take you through as much of it as I can. Um, um, we'll go through all the steps that I've gone through. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to free this screen and this lid, uh, which will make things nice and easy. So we'll get the keyboard out and we'll get all these screws undone. So I'm going to start on the inside of this laptop. So I'm just going to pop this off. If it will come in one, it might be screwed down. Looks like it possibly is screwed down. So battery out. Yes, it is screwed down. Sorry, I got a bit hay fever going on as well. So if you hear me sniffing away, that'd be why. So that's those two undone. What we'll do is we'll just quickly I'm gonna remove this bracket that hides the RAM, etc. Sugar. And we'll go from there. So behind this we should find our RAM, probably a wireless card, and maybe a couple of screws holding the top chassis in. Let's just make sure. There we go. So there we go, there's our wireless card. There's our RAM modules. Um, so these are expansion bays. One of them is definitely going to be for a cellular card. So if you want to put a SIM card into it, uh, into it then you could use it on a cellular network. Um, just an expansion thing. I'm not sure what the other one's for. Uh, so at the moment we're running a whacking two gig of RAM in here. So obviously this is a few years old, so that's about normal. We just lost the screw on the way, so we'll pick it up in a second. See if this wants to come out now. There we are, that looks a bit more healthy. So we'll put this flat and then we'll lift this out. Just be careful because there's usually a ribbon under here, just like that. So what we'll do is we'll take this little silver tab back. We'll push this locking clip away from us and then we should be able to lift this up and pull it out. There we go. So that's our power button switch and all the rest of it. So the next thing we'll do, take our keyboard out. So again, a couple of screws holding that one in. And do our keyboard, so just flick this up. And that's the keyboard out. So put those two screws to one side for the keyboard. So next thing we've got, got our various connections for our monitor. We might not have to take the whole thing apart if we're lucky. So we'll have a go without and we'll go from there. So, what have we got here? Not sure what that's for, but it's not connected to anything. So there we go, I'm not sure, <laughs> quite sure why that's there. So we've definitely got our ribbon cable here going to the main screen. So that will be running the video connection. Then we've got our connections for Wi-Fi running through the board. So we'll just have a look at those next. So here you are, you can see all the Wi-Fi connections routed through. So we'll just undo those. They just pop up nice and straightforward. And we're going to have to remove all these cellular ones as well. Which is a little bit annoying, but there we go. Once you've got them out, you can just pull them through from the other side. They will just post through, so it's nice and easy. So if you can see this, we'll just get these on through. So one at a time, generally. Okay, I'll just get the little cable cover on that one again. 
which so we can identify which ones are which. Last one. So there we go. It's all our cables through. So now we will do this. So it really is just a question of working your way down all the way around that one actually. There we go. I was going to say that one might be touched to the screen but it's not. Move our ribbon out. Right. And then we just want to undo our VGA cable. So this one usually just pulls straight up, just like that. Right. So that is all now disconnected. Now it looks like there's two screws on the underside of this and then two on top. So we'll just quickly flip it over. Yeah, so we've got two here and here. Slide that into shot. Both of them have got a little D on them, which I'm guessing is display. So we'll just undo those quickly. And hopefully we'll get lucky and it'll just be the top two and then the whole display will drop out. So a moment of truth. Let's undo these four flat connectors. The only piece of advice I would give you is just try and support your screen while you're doing this, just because it will drop back. And you could, if you're not replacing half of it like I am, it will damage things. So hopefully this will just lift out now. Hey, there you go. Let's put that to one side. Right, so we just want to get this plastic housing off first. So these little rubber feet that are surrounding the screen. If the screen is as old as mine is, they should just lift away. So just like that. And then we'll undo the half a dozen screws that surround. Just working your way around the outside. I've got one more that you can't see that's off shot in the other corner and you can just see it. Take it back. Now the other reason I'm replacing this is because some of these brackets that hold the screws in are actually broken so, so just carefully popping this up all the way around the screen. Just work your way around. It will just lift out the top one might be a little bit funny because it's got that silver catch next to it. So that's that off. So let's just have a look at what we've got here. So you can actually see that the bracket for that is not very good. So let's, um, I don't know how much of this I want because of the fact that I have got replacement parts. So let me just go and grab the replacements and uh, we'll come back to you and then we can see exactly what we need from the old screen. Right, so this is our new one. It's a nice pink one, not my choice. Uh, so what I have noticed is I have made a slight mistake in that I bought the one with the camera hole in it and we don't have a camera, but that's not a problem because we'll just reuse the old one, so that's absolutely fine. All the holes and everything will line up, they're all pretty generic, so that's absolutely fine. So just chuck that to one side. Uh, this one cost us a grand total of £13.95p um, and did come with a set of hinges as well, which is great. Um, whether or not I use them, I don't know. I will probably just transfer everything from the old screen over. So let's start by lifting this screen out and just see how much is going to come with it. Okay, let's remove these. I'm going to remove the hinges first, I think, because they're all pretty broken anyway. So just undo the screws along the bottom. There's one hinge. We'll do the ones on this side as well. And I'll probably just replace them just so that it's all nice and tidy. Just go and grab those hinges again. Right, 
sorry, back to what we were doing before I got completely interrupted. So, uh, first thing we need to do is get our brackets and everything transferred across to the new screen. Um, some of these are taped in, some of them are physically attached. So, we'll get the brackets off and we'll go from there. So, first thing we will do is undo these three on this side, or on this side, helps if I can count. That's two. And then once we've done that, we'll go and transfer everything over from one screen to the other. So that's one bracket off. And now we'll do the other side. Now this laptop has been in quarantine for about a week. So uh, anything COVID related is hopefully gone. So nearly there, and last one. Now the only thing we're going to actually need off of this screen other than the brackets is the inverter. So this thing here at the bottom will need to come off, this piece here. So we'll unplug this cable, and we we'll unplug that, and then we'll just take this out here. So this should just pull out, hopefully, unless this one's one of the ones clipped in. No, it's just taped in really well. Let's screwdriver down so it's not in my way. So I'll do all this tape. And there we are, that just comes off. So that's all disconnected. Now I was trying to figure out how that bracket is attached. Because it doesn't look like it's Hold on there very well. It looks like it might be part of the frame somehow. He says, right, okay, let's unscrew this inverter and see if we can get it off and then I'll see if I can figure out how we can transfer the bracket over because the screen I've got doesn't have an inverter but it also doesn't have a bracket to hold the inverter. So I'm not really sure what we do about that. I don't know if it's part of the frame or what, or if it's just slotted in. Let's try and figure that bit out. Let's undo this tape and then we'll see if we can see how it's connected. It's not a hundred percent, it's not a massive issue if it's, looks like it might be soldered on actually. biggest issue in the world if yeah it's soldered on okay so it's not the biggest issue in the world if the inverter isn't on this little bracket because it will just sit below the screen but it was rather it was rather it's attached so you can sort of see that it's on there and that's soldered on so let's just figure out how we can get this inverter off in such a way we can do it without breaking it I have unscrewed it might be stuck down on this back edge. No, not stuck down. This might be a bit of a brute force job. There we go. So that's the inverter off. So you can just see that there's the bracket along the back. But we actually don't really need that. As I say, I've got another screen already. Uh, so same connections and everything, but you can see it hasn't got these brackets along the bottom, which is slightly annoying. This is a pre-loved one, but it is <coughs> of the exact same ilk, so um, I'd rather just use it in the day. This is for a, for a family member, so it's um, not one I'm overly concerned about. If it was for a customer, then I'd buy the actual Dell screen specific for this model, but I don't really see the need. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly transfer these brackets back on. So I've just got, again, four screws on each side. We'll reattach that back cable and we'll just stick the inverter down the bottom. And what I'll probably do is just get some double-sided tape on the back of it and just tape it to the back of the screen, uh, the, um, this, this back piece, just so that that way it's not going to wiggle around too much. Just 
just do that other side quickly. Let's grab these screws. So again, four back in on this side. So this is the point where I discover the, uh, <laughs> the screen doesn't work. No, my luck. Two. So from this point onwards, this is just a bit of a transfer job. So what I'll probably do, just so that you don't have to sit through me just transferring everything over, is just speed the whole process up. So just flip this over. Let's grab our inverter. Like that. And that would ordinarily sit there. But as I say, we'll, we'll take that down after the fact, just so we don't have it wiggling around inside. Put that in. Connect that up. There we go. So that, for the minute, is it with the screen. Let's just pop that to one side. Okay. So, what we need to transfer on this is this piece here. The cabling all the way around the outside, this top little bit up here, same on this side. So we'll just start by carefully undoing it. So our next thing we want is our screen. We'll see how that inverter looks and try and figure out whether or not we want to uh, tape it in place or not. We'll see how it sits first. So that's everything sat down flat. Let's try and tuck all these cables in so they're neat. I'm not obstructing anything. To be honest with you, I'm quite happy with that inverter is sat, so I'm probably not going to stress about it. 
I was going to tape it, but I don't think it really needs it, to be, truth be told. Right, let's grab our new hinges. And try and figure out what side is what. And I think that one is that side. Yep. So this goes under here. Probably should have installed it first, but I'd rather just get my cable positions right and then worry about it after. And then that goes there, like that. There is some sort of little tabs just here and just here that it sits in, so you can't really get them too wrong. Right. Now, what we'll do is I should have taken note. Just figure out where our screw holes are. So, above the two screws on the inner side, there's a little arrow, and that's where your um, screws for your screen need to go. So, we'll just do those. Those nice and tight. And then we'll do the two on this side. more and then we're done with our screen back in place. That's all nice and tight. Right okay so next thing we want to do is get this back on. This tends to be a little bit more fiddly when you've had all your cables out. So I tend to try and get this front bit done. If I can it'll be on. And like you can hear it will just click to say it's in place. Might just need a little bit of gentle persuasion, as it were. What you'll find is once you've got your screws back in place, then it will sort of maneuver itself a little bit more. So, well, what we'll do is we'll put all our screws back in around the outside of the screen, then we'll click everything down a bit better. looking better already. And then last screw, and then that's that all done. Oh, we'll just, just run back round again. We'll just clip anything in that's looking a bit like it's not quite in the right place. Or bulging. Oh, the screws. Or something shifted in that corner. Where that's going from? Let's just quickly grab that out. Attracted a screw from somewhere. Watch it is it's slightly magnetic, so it's uh, probably stuck to the back of the screen. I would imagine. Just run around. Anything that's slightly pushed up, push it down. You can hear the old click. There you go. So that's lovely and tidy and very pink. <laughs> so, uh, right, so that's that done. So, next, we're back to fitting this back in. So, what we'll do first before we run any cables, we'll get the screen locked into place. So if you remember when we took it apart, we've got about five or six screws to put in. So we'll do the two top ones, then we'll do the one underneath, and then we'll run all our cables. Cleanse this up. These hinges feel much better already. And then I've got my two screws from earlier, which are for my bottom of the case. You remember we're putting it back in the holes with the D by them for the display. Right, there we go. 
So this tends to be a little bit more fiddly now. What I tend to do is the display first, and then I work on the Wi-Fi cables afterwards. So just running it through the sort of little path there. Now all of these cables have got to make it through this tiny little hole, which is a, a royal pain to say the least. I tend to try and run one or two at a time and I'll just work my way around them. So this one will go through first. Let's just have a look over here. So from my angle I can see it's coming through. I can see the hole on both sides. So that's one done. So again, these ones, I tend to start with one side at a time. Annoyingly, the more cables you push through, the more of a pain it becomes. So I'll actually lift that black one out because I want to get these two in first. Black. Now what I would say is if you're doing this at home, you don't have to go as far as I did. Um, so I've obviously changed the screen, the frame, the hinges, everything, but you can get away with just doing the screen and you don't have to take the whole laptop apart um, so you could just do your screen by doing your screws around the outside of the bezel and then dropping the screen out and replacing it um, which is actually slightly less painful than what I've just done but obviously my old lid for this laptop was so disgusting that I just wanted to do the whole lot so you can go as far as me but there isn't necessarily any need to do that. So the thing I didn't say at the start of this as well is always battery first, so make sure you disconnect that. And as long as you do that, then you're laughing pretty much. Come on. Right, so that is one side entirely done. Let's work on the other side now. Right, so let's push this one through. Probably should have done the other one first, but there we go. That's your name, went through really easy. Sometimes you have to really fight with these cables to get them through, and they just won't do what you want them to do at all. Right, so that's now all through, so let's close this lid back up. Uh, flip this over. So here's all our cables. So we're not interested in any of the ones with the little covers on them. We only want these two, so we'll run these two first, which are black and our white, which are for our Wi-Fi aerials. Um, now they are marked, right, so they are marked, I'm pretty sure white is the, um, is the primary and black is the secondary, but it does actually say on the chip anyway, so you're okay, there's little, two little arrows that say J1 and J2, and they've got colour next to them, so that makes it really easy. So, just here, this one's got a little black arrow, and this one's got a little white arrow, and you just plug into the corresponding. So there's our white. And 
Here's our rack. And you should just be able to push them on like that. So as these cables aren't used, I'm not going to be too light with them. I'll just get them in as quick as I can pretty much. However, I possibly should have done them before I've done these two because I've just made my life a little bit more complicated. So let's just quickly unclip those. They're connected so they're not going anywhere. over at some point. Let's just run them slightly different pathway just so they're not in my way. There we go. Right, let's get these in. So that best they plans. Take two. I'm stop chatting to your uh, Wi Fi cable. Right, there we are. So that's all now back in place. What we'll do while we're here, uh, we'll just get the screw cover on. Because I don't need to go back under here now. Sometimes you find that the keyboard screwed in from the bottom, but in this case, we're all right because it's not. The nice thing about Dells is that they're actually quite straightforward to work on, they tend to make it pretty logical. Right, so that's that. So, next thing, let's just make sure this is all neat, and now we're going to put our buttons back in and our keyboard. So let's grab our keyboard. So again, slot this into here like that, and straight down, and push and push, and drop down. And then our power button strip. So this one is a little bit more fiddly. It looks like it's been removed at some stage before because it's a bit of a mess. But in essence, you're going to slide this in below the connector. Easiest way to do this is tilt the screen all the way back, one end in, push down. Hopefully, our cables underneath aren't in the way, yes, they are a little bit. Everything should just push into place. Back here, I like to just do that. Make sure the whole back is clipped in nicely as well, which it is. And then we just need our battery. And that's that. Right, so we've got this now nicely clipped back in along here. Everything's fitted back in. We have got these little sticky feet to go back on to the screw heads around the screen, which I'll just do quickly, just for being aesthetically pleasing. I'm missing one, but that's not the end of the world. 
And that's it. I was going to do the hard drive fitting as well with the caddy in this end, but I cannot for the life of me find where I put it. So we won't be doing that today. That will save that one for another video. So that's it. Everything's fitted. New screens in there, or new secondhand screen, um, existing frame, new lid. It's all looking nice and shiny and new, and it's ready to go. So I will do a another video for the hard drive and loading the operating system on so you can see how to do that. Um, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope I've shown you a little bit on how to do these repairs on these things when you've got a pretty grubby, disgusting laptop that needs some TLC. Um, but yeah, as long as you've enjoyed it, drop us a like, leave us a comment, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. Thanks for watching.